How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and long time no see. It's been a whopping three years since we last had NAB and I know I'm a bit late to the party but I wanted to share a few things that were on my radar this year. Kicking things off, I went straight to Canon's booth to check out their new Flex Cinema Zooms. I've been in the market for some large format zoom lenses and until recently there haven't really been a ton of options available. On the lower end you have Zeiss Compact Zooms or Ajinu Easies or if you just have a baller budget you could opt for something like Premistas or Signature Zooms. So I was really excited to check out this new release from Canon and there's a new 20 to 50 and a 45 to 135 both at T2.4 and they're just absolutely stunning. A T2.4 in large format is probably around a 1.8 equivalent in Super 35 and to me these lenses feel very much like prime lenses. There was very little to no breathing and the bokeh characteristics are stunning. These seem like a fantastic pairing for commercial or narrative work but the focal lengths might be a little awkward for doc scenarios. For that I'd probably go with something like the Premista 20 to 100 which has the perfect zoom range. Despite that I'll probably be putting in a pre-order for these lenses. The 20 to 50 is slated to release in June and the 45 to 135 in September. Speaking of lenses, there were a few new additions to existing sets. Alice had the new 21mm anamorphic, which is basically a fisheye. Tokina debuted their new 180 1.9 at the B&H booth, and Zeiss featured their new Supreme 15. I was really impressed with how well the Supreme handled distortion and maintained a rectilinear appearance. Aperture unveiled their new 600C, which is a RGB COB, and they claim it's a stop brighter than the Orbiter. I took a few color readings and they're what you'd normally expect from Aperture. TM30 fidelity scores were all above 90 with near perfect gamut indexes of 99 to 100. Granted, these are probably pre-production units in a very uncontrolled lighting environment, so take these measurements with a grain of salt. At the Aperture dinner, they also unveiled a couple prototypes that are in the works, including a MC Pro and Aperture tubes. The MC Pro is going to include a new IP64 rated housing and magnets on the front to support different accessories like diffusion or grids. The tubes are actually really, really interesting. They were able to cram 16 pixels into a single foot, which is pretty mind boggling when you consider that the Astera Titans have 16 pixels in four feet. This gives for more realistic effect patterns and higher resolution pixel mapping when lighting with arrays. Last on the list was Cytos Link DMX, which allows us to control wireless DMX to control all of our lights right within Cytos Link. This is probably what I'm most excited about from Aperture. If you've ever used the Astera app, you'll know that it's about as user intuitive as trying to text from a rotary telephone. And not to mention, that app only controls my Titan tubes. The fact that I'll be able to control all my lights and all my fixtures from a single app as simple as Cytos Link, sign me up. While checking out the Airy booth, I was able to get some hands-on time with the new Hi5 Follow Focus system. I won't get super detailed on all the ergonomic improvements, but one of the biggest improvements is the modular radio system. So stock, it'll come as a standard white radio, and that connects to all your standard Airy cameras, but you can then switch out the different modules, and they'll constantly frequency hop for environments with a lot of radio interference. To use the new frequency hopping module, you'll have to use an adapter called the RIA to accept the signal on the camera side. And it has a new touchscreen and wonderful haptic feedback and the ability to hot swap battery so you don't have to constantly reboot. It also automatically detects which focus rings you're using, which I thought was pretty neat, but I think Airy has delayed production of those until next year. It'd be a steep investment for me as a DP considering I'm not a camera assistant, but it would be nice being able to rent out a complete Airy package. Blackmagic Design was showing off Resolve 18 and the new cloud collaboration abilities, which I'm super excited about, and I imagine would open a lot more doors for colorists working remotely. I don't personally do a ton of editing, but I could see myself hiring out an editor to put together rough assemblies for these YouTube videos, and then I can go in and do any fine tuning or color work. There's a new standalone app to generate proxies and also has a cloud store network disk that uses Dropbox to sync to other units, so remote editors always have a local copy. Resolve 18 is also super optimized for M1 Ultra chips, which makes me super happy. I'm always recommending Resolve to newbies and current professionals because it's packed with so many professional features that simply aren't in other software. I was able to check out the Venice 2, but wasn't really able to see much since it was bolted in a far corner at Sony's booth. It has a new 8.6K sensor and has a new base ISO of 800 and 3200. The rep told me that aside from resolution, the new sensor has cleaner noise performance in the shadows compared to the previous Venice, allowing for more usable dynamic range, but again, didn't really mean much since I couldn't really evaluate the image. 
It seems pretty versatile in terms of formats. It shoots full frame at 8.6K and records 5.8K at Super 35, which is a nice option for when you need to run Super 35 lenses at higher resolutions. A lot of my favorite shows have been shot on the Venice recently, and I really enjoy its look. To me, the Venice 2 seems like a weird combination of Aries' spectacular color science and Red's high resolution sensors. I'd be super interested in testing one if I can get my hands on one. One thing I would love to see from Sony are dedicated cinema lenses. Most other camera brands have some sort of lens offering geared towards the high-end cinema market, but Sony has a whole lot of nothing. They had this whole master plan to release a cinema lens series, and they did release a 16-35 T3.1, but I guess they just forgot about it to focus on releasing a million other cameras. I for one love the 20-135 kit lens, and I use it for a ton of my work and would love to see a more refined version of that lens. One fixture that caught my eye in particular was the Evoke 1200 from Lanelux. I've seen glimpses of this light online, so it was great being able to check it out in person. It's a 1200 watt COB with a 35 centimeter Fresnel, and it's an absolute unit. They also had an entire kit with a flight case on casters, and after I saw that, I didn't stand a chance. I knew I had to have it. So we were able to work out a deal, and I was able to take one home once the show was over, and it's nice finally having something with a ton of punch in my lighting kit. The case fits the fixture, the Fresnel and barn doors, the ballast, and a couple other accessories, and wheels right into my van with ease. It even has insets on the top if you want to stack multiple cases. I mean, come on. So that's my take on NAB 2022. It was a fun time getting to see all the new things and hanging with a bunch of cool people along the way. It's super important to not get caught up in all the flashy gizmos and gadgets that are on the bleeding edge of tech, but rather how all of these different tools can help tell your stories. I feel like it's really easy for a lot of people to get starstruck by the advent of new technology, but again, they're all just tools. If I had to pick a trend for this year, it would have to be virtual production. There were LED walls everywhere, and I even saw this RC camera dolly roaming around on the show floor. It didn't seem like there were too many really groundbreaking technological advancements, but I think everyone was just happy to be together again. If you stopped me to say hi last week, just know that I appreciate you, and it's always really fun meeting the people that keep this channel going. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful in some way. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.